Good morning. This is a video explaining why you should try building this mech and buying this mech and driving this mech. Uh, this guy does incredibly well in matches. I rarely see over 800 damage in matches. Obviously some matches are terrible, like I just had one match where it was like 250, but our team was kind of disorganized and despite our all best efforts with good communication skills, we just weren't going to win the match. The other team had a better strategy and they kept us busy with light mechs while the assault mechs just pummeled us every, every opportunity. But that aside, on my really good maps and really good matches, I'll regularly see over 1,100 damage with my record on this one being uh, 1,485 damage. And that's not bad for a mech that only has two defensive weapons unless you count narc. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is the Nova Cat B, or what I call Rain Man. And normally you get six missile hard points and two defensive weapons that are in the form of lasers. And you can change out the Omnipods and get varying degrees of successfulness out of this mech. I prefer to go with five missile points and then one narc. And if you place it just right, like I've done in this position here, it's the highest point on the mech's firing arcs for, for the uh, missile points. Or projectiles, whichever you want to call it. Projectiles is kind of too varied. It could be in ballistics, and this mech does not have ballistics. So I call it missile points. Let's take a look. So the way I've got this thing set up, I'm running with four tons of double heat sinks. Now, when you look down here, 1.3 seems like it's really good, but believe me, it's not quite as good as it, you think. You're going to spend a lot of your time sending salvos of these LRM-15s. By the way, LRM-15s are on clan mechs are absolutely the perfect size. Uh, LRM-20s are too big. LRM-10s don't do enough damage, but they do have a good cycle rate. So if you have eight of them, as an example, you could do quite a bit of damage with LRM-10s. And for five tons, difference between an LRM-20, you get one and a half tons of usable weight. So this only weighs 3.5 uh, tons, whereas for five missiles more, five missiles more costs you one and a half tons. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but I'm not complaining because I really love LRM-15s, and I sure as hell don't want them to change it. So... Uh, as far as ammo goes, I'm running, what do we got here? We got six uh, and five. We got 11 tons of ammo for the LRM-15s. And each one of these is delivering 276 uh, shots. And then I also have the NARC with one and a half tons of ammo for the NARC. Might be a little excessive, but I think it actually does rather well. So we're getting 23 shots out of this. And if you place it this way here where you put the missile first, the missile first, and then the narc, what you end up with is the narc being on the highest point of those spots. You don't want it down here. But honestly, it's really not that huge of a difference, but I've actually gotten some really good success out of having it just slightly higher. And I know on my Warhammer, uh, the Warhammer 2C that I have, um, the uh, narc ends up being up here on the shoulder, which is really nice. And on that guy, I'm just running uh, um, the, the one I have. I'm kind of trying to remember what it is. I think it's called the Warhammer 2C4. And that guy is getting um, three LRM-20s, which does really well. The Cobra Cat, I run it the exact same way as well, except the Cobra Cat also has, like the, the Warhammer 2C, has uh, four uh, bullet, um, laser points. So anyways, back to this guy. So you can change out these torsos, but let me show you the reason why you shouldn't. And I'm a huge fan of Omnipods, but this mech here, they could have gone with, with or without the Omnipods, I wouldn't have cared. Uh, so for firepower, energy cooldown, minus 10%. Range, plus 5%. Missile heat generation, minus 10%. And you're getting your base armor features, but even for a clan mech, this is pretty good. Center torso, plus 20. Um... 
right arm, left arm, you're getting plus 20. And then left torso, right torso, you're getting plus 15. Nothing on the legs because I guess they don't matter. Um, but target decay duration uh, plus 0.5. That's not a lot, but it does help out. And let me show you with these features what you're really getting. So with, with all the skills that I added to it and the quirks, I'm averaging out at um, 1,080 range. And that's optimum or maximum. It's That's the great thing about LRMs is you don't have to think ATM terms. Um, I tried running an ATM build on this and I absolutely ate dog after three matches. I was so frustrated I almost wanted to quit playing the game. Then I put the LRMs back on and it was life was happy. So uh, you're getting a cooldown of uh, 0.5 on the heat so it's actually the heat is 4.5 per unit or excuse me that yeah that's the heat the cooldown is 4.3 so it's what it is um missile spread i'm getting uh, features uh missile spread you know, indirect indirect you know i'm getting good, similar numbers let's actually go over to the skill tree and i'll show you what i'm talking about so you go over to the skill tree here and I'm maxed out on range. I'm not worried about heat because I added double heat sinks. And believe me, 11 tons is enough. Um, the max of it I ever did was I only had two double heat sinks. And then I had, uh, I think I had 3,500 or 3,600 um, missiles. And honestly, I really could have used the extra heat sinks. So go with the four heat sinks. Just trust me on this one. And uh, so don't worry about that. I went with velocity, missile features, maximum survivability. And I wish I could get two more on here, but for whatever reason, we get all these skill nodes, but we can't do anything with them. It's, they might as well not even be there. This could go away, and I wouldn't even notice the difference. Because um, it doesn't do anything. Uh, so then uh, I call this additional survivability because it's cooling. Um, I have the, those maxed out. I like being able to tech max when they get close. That's really useful when you got somebody coming around a corner. You know to fire right away. This, that hesitation of error is gone. And that can be the difference between um, winning a match and losing a match. Uh, target decay, when you go into cover, I'm still going to shoot you. Um, deprivation, kind of self-explanatory. I need my two cool shots in my UAV, and you absolutely, positively, no matter what, need to have these two NARC features on here. And I hate these things. Um, I hate faction play. Standing around for 20 minutes waiting for a match. Yeah, that's a waste of time. Anyway, um, so yeah, you absolutely, positively got to have these. So the way I've got this guy set up is my uh, left keypad, or left on my um, mouse, does both the medium lasers and they fire them simultaneously. You can you can put them on chain fire if you want, but um, I like being able to just you know, target and shoot 20 damage you know at optimum range. Uh, then I got my narc separately, and um, they do actually have similar range. But every time I find the, fire the uh, the uh, laser, I didn't want to have to fire that because this the heavy laser has a opt or a maximum range of 540 as I recall. And I didn't want to deal with that. Um, you know, just throwing narcs down range every single time is kind of pointless. And then on button three, I've got my uh, five LRM 15s. Now let me show you what this looks like in a match. And we go to Tourmaline Desert. I always go there. It's part of the reason I always go here is because the heat is, scale is really good. It's not too hot and it's not too cold. So it gives you a good optimization. And it's never the same as when you're in a match for whatever reason. So we're just going target to acquired. target a Mac, take a walk, and so you fire buttons one. You can out, you can set these up however you want. It goes a ballistic, or you know it feels like a ballistic. And then here's the missile fire.
And here's what it's like to be the enemy. Underground. You can see the uh, narket. Believe me. I've been chased by somebody who's a reasonably good player in a, a Nova Cat B, and it sucks. And with that narc coming in, just like it just did, it means that even if you go into cover, they're still going to be able to shoot at you. They may not necessarily hit you, but they can definitely shoot at you. I don't think I'm going to do enough damage to this guy to kill him because they need to have different angles. This really means a difference. And one of the benefits of this mech is, is it's tanky. I mean, let's take a look at it, this thing from the side. It's not bad. It's definitely not as wide uh, from the side view as a, um, let's see, a Nike Eye, which is what it looks most similarly like. I mean, seriously. It looks like a, a, a the linebacker equivalent of a Nike Eye. If a Nike Eye was a running back, this would be the lineman. Um, and then, you know, I love how it, it shows the smoke coming out the back. That's just so cool. Even when that fires. Yeah, so ultimately, I think this is a really good choice for a mech. And um, I only discovered this thing about a year and a half ago. Um, obviously it's been around longer than that, but I told this guy that I really loved driving my Hellfire mech, and my Hellfire is still one of my favorite mechs. It's, it's tanky as hell. It doesn't have any skill features that really benefit me. It's not an Omni mech, um, but, um, with four, uh, laser points and four missile points and one ballistic, which I never use, um, it really works really well. And yes, I have tried it with the new Gauss, and I just didn't like it. It just wasn't me. But this mech um, and the Hellfire are easily my two favorite uh, LRM boats, and, at least in the heavy class. The, the Mad Dog is nice, but the thing I find about the Mad Dog is it's just too squishy. It's just too easily destroyed. I've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with this mech, the way it's laid out, on a um, um, Mad Dog and come out victorious twice. Uh, whenever I see an LRM boat, I actually go after them. I've got a couple of videos of me going after uh, Nova Cat bees and Nova Cat Cobra Cats. And um, I even went after a bounty hunter one time, and, and uh, that didn't work out so well. But because uh, the Marauder is just absolutely, has just be it's just better built for tonnage wise. But I, I despise the, uh, the weight that's associated with um, Inner Spear mechs, and I just think Clan mechs are better. That's an opinion, of course. But I hope uh, this was useful and uh, hope to see you in the matches.